So, uh, I'm going to do this in English. So, good afternoon. Thank you for giving me the time to present. It's good to be good. Okay, thank you. I know we've gone over time, so I'm going to try and be very quick. Um, but I'm available for questions afterwards. So, my name is Philip Antonio. I'm the Regional Director for Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Europe. Um, I'm actually based in Dubai, but I come to Cyprus quite often. And I wanted to give you some information on intelligence security. So, we're not working. It's okay. Is that working? Fine. Okay, now I have to stand. So, just to give you an idea, this is the pedigree of Mobotics. For the past, let's say, 18 years, we've had 11 industry firsts. You've seen some other companies as well provide certain of these solutions. SIP enabled, security codex, onboard SD cards. We were the first to do this in the industry. And we have 18 years of experience with 42 granted patents on this technology in the industry as well. So this is a bit of the heritage. Now, to go on, this is where we are and how we play. Seven regional offices across seven continents, more than 480,000 items sold annually, 1,872 partner network, and 135 countries out of 195. So we've got a big reach. Some of you might not know Mobotics, and there's a reason for this. We are not a camera company. We're a security company first. So we work in certain areas where other people don't. Now, when I talk about intelligence, I talk about intelligence to define value. And how do you define value? It's not just putting a standard, whatever camera it is, into a system. It's what can you do with it. So for instance, with Mobotics, we have multiple embedded analytics in the hardware, not through the software. This is actually inbuilt into the hardware. We reduce SPOF reliance. SPOF is single point of failure. We don't use NVRs. NVRs is old technology. So we've gone beyond that, which I'll show you a, bit, a few more details later. We can reduce the number of hardware devices, but increase the coverage as well with dual lenses, multiple sensors, wider angles. We have an MTF, mean time before failure, of 80,000 hours, which is about nine years on average. We've got existing installations in some of the harshest environments in the world, including at the top of Mount Everest, three kilometers underground in mines, even the empty quarter in Saudi Arabia that have been installed for more than seven years with no maintenance, no issue. We only use three to four watts per camera. All the cameras are PoE, which means you have a longer life cycle because there's less power usage through the actual product itself. We can reduce network costs because all our devices, we're making them as cyber safe as possible, which basically means the reliance on network security gets less because the hardware does it for you. And we can reduce human error with built-in intelligence. So this is how we define value as mobotics. It's not just from a software angle, but you've got to look at it from the hardware as well. Every product from mobotics is designed, developed, manufactured, and tested in Germany. Anyone can come at any time and visit the factory and see the production going on. We do not outsource our production to anywhere. Everything is done in-house. That way we can control it and make sure it's the highest standard. We have actually been an IoT device since 2002, before IoT even existed. All our cameras have dual Linux processors inside. All our cameras can connect to the internet and talk to other internet devices. Now, Internet of Things is a big thing, but there's an issue with it, and the issue is the cybersecurity, which some of my colleagues here have mentioned today, analytics, cybersecurity, and protection. It's very important. It's not just a myth. It's actually happening. So to give you an example, Washington last year had more than 25,000 cameras hacked. This is fact. It's on the news. You can Google it. Other researchers have found any camera that has inbuilt IR can be hacked as well, because you can go through, in, through the IR LED. Again, you can look at uh, hacknews.com, the link is there, copy it, have a look at it yourself. These are online reports, it's not something we're saying. 
So we've looked at this and we've decided we need more encryption, more security, more intelligence, such as this. So we've taken a rough idea of the market, what other people are doing and what we do. Now, other people do have some of these features, but they don't have all of these features on one product. We have this across every single item we sell. Every single camera that's sold has user and group definitions up to 100 different users and 25 groups. We can restrict connections down to one port on the network so no one else can access. We can secure connections anywhere with HTTPS. A lot of, let's say, larger VMS companies don't even use HTTPS. They're still on HTTP. We use X509 certification for the passwords. We have open SL, SSL libraries. We can keep track of all access attempts, anti-bot protection. All of this is vital because a camera is an intrusion point on any network. And anyone who tells you differently doesn't know what they're talking about. You've heard him mentioned three times today by three different speakers. It's because it's fact. Now, I mentioned the fact we don't use NVRs. And this is how we do it. So this is a traditional system. Streams to the NVR and from the NVR goes back to the office environment. That means that NVR, whether it's 16 channel, 32 channel, is a single point of failure. If you lose that NVR, that NVR drops, you've lost the cameras connected to it. Again, just fact. What we do, we have an NVR built inside each camera. So we stream and compress from the camera directly to the storage and the office environment. This means less bandwidth, less storage need, less time taken from actual real-time view to the recording view as well, and it's more resilient. If an NVR fails, which it never has with Mobotic so far, touch wood, if it does, you lose only that camera that has the NVR NVR. We basically do this. And that's the main difference between decentralized and a centralized solution. Centralized solution is being slowly worked out. There's even certain consultants that restrict the use of NVRs because of the damage it can cause, not just from, let's say, resilience and robust, but also from hacking. We also have automatic failover. So again, when we send stream directly to the storage, it's great. But what happens if we lose connection with the storage? For whatever reason, the camera will then start recording on itself. We have a micro SD card up to 256 GB, and we have roadmap up to one terabyte not yet released. But the camera records on itself, depending on your configuration, can be up to a week. And then it will transfer the files to the storage when it reconnects automatically. This is a buffered um, failover that we have in every single camera we sell. Now, a bit of fun. One of these pictures is taken with a $250,000 camera. The other picture is taken with Mobotics. Does anyone want to guess which is which? I'm serious. Anyone want to guess? Which one? That one's what? That one's what? Sorry. That's my bodies. Sorry. So, that's a actually a clearer image, you can see it better here, than the one by National Geographic. There's a reason for this, and this is how we do it. We have H.264, like other companies, but we also have our own codec called MXPEG. There's a difference of iframes and p-frames. H.264 uses a standard real-time frame and then predicts the next three, four, five frames. Which means you can pause the video or the image, you can get a blurred image. But 25 frames per second actually can mean four to seven iframes, which is the real frame. With MXPEG, everything is an iframe. So if I give you six frames per second, I give you six iframes per second, Whereas H.264 will only give you up to 25 frames to get the same result. Again, we're reducing bandwidth, we're reducing power, and we're reducing storage again, and giving you 100% clear images with no focal issues. We'll do a little bit about thermals. So everyone knows thermals are used in pitch black, right? Simple. But apart from pitch blackness, we've got other applications. So if you look at this video behind me, this gentleman is going to an area to light a cigarette, which is not allowed. We will pick up the heat from the tip of his cigarette with our thermal. You can see the red line above, that's an alarm. 
we picked up just the heat from the cigarette. So this is for causing fires, but we can also do something else. So fever control. This gentleman has a temperature more than 40 degrees. So imagine at an airport, at a hospital, border crossing, multiple people coming through, we can configure and say anyone over 39 degrees, 39 and a half degree temperature, we want to see them. And this is what happens. This is the intelligence I'm talking about, because it's a combination of the software and hardware that can actually do this. It's not one or the other. Then, what about manufacturing? This is a silo. They collect wood chips. The fire is there, but you can't see it in the optical image. This is a real project that was done in the US where they were losing about fifty dollars to $60,000 a month because of fires being started. With one thermal at each silo, they reduced it down to about $1,000. That's a good return on investment. So it's an idea to think outside the box. Now, this is one of my favorite ones. There's something underneath the gentleman's shirt. Anyone want to guess what it is? Roughly? A tie. Eh, it's not clear. It's not clear, right? But we can do thermal overlay. We can overlay a thermal on top of the optical. What does it look like now? Did someone say knife? Yeah. Exactly. There's a knife under his shirt. This is the combination of what we're talking about, again, hardware and software. By overlaying the thermal image on top of the optical, it gives you more information. And this is automatic alerts. So, inbuilt analytics. Everything I've shown you, by the way, so far is included with the cameras and no extra charge. There's no software charge for this. There's no license fees. There's no firmware upgrades needed. This is free. It comes as standard. So does this. So we have people counting. We have restricted areas. We have product placement, heat mapping. So imagine retail or the malls. You can heat map where people are going and see which attract, uh, what attracts them the most throughout the day. Service areas, directional change. If everyone's walking in one direction, someone moves in a different direction, we can alarm. If someone starts running, we can alarm. If someone starts stopping in a certain area, we can alarm as well. But then we also have something else, and I know it's been mentioned before, but if you look at this video, the trees shaking, the shadows, the rain, we're not recording, we're monitoring. And you're gonna see a car come out of the parking. There we go. Arrow gives you the direction of the movement and we start recording the alert. 10 seconds before and up to 10 seconds afterwards, which means we alarm. We call this the activity sensor. We can tell the difference between an event and an actual motion, whether it's a tree, rain. But what we can also do is do it by size. So if you only want to see people, we can mention a size depending on distance and we don't care about cars, we don't care about cats. Again, this is all standard in all the cameras that you can do, and there's no charges for this. I'll go a bit faster, because I'm almost out of time. So these are verticals, these are different projects we've done everywhere in the world, from industrial, retail, government, education, mobility, and health. Um, so we're pretty much active in every single vertical you can find. But we also do something different. We do non-standard solutions. The first picture is a panic pole, it's actually in Italy. It connects directly to the police, or to the ambulance services. If someone sees an accident or a theft or something, they can run, press whichever button, the camera activates, and they have direct access back to whichever um, operation they need to discuss. The second picture is Smart City, counting the number of cars down certain roads. The third one is actually bulletproof cameras, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that were deployed in Iraq. We've got about 460 of these set up on the streets of Basra because it's the only camera that doesn't need any maintenance and they can't do anything with it. And then the last picture is city surveillance using existing infrastructure. No extra poles, no extra cabling that was needed. We've got modular systems, so it reduces the cost overall of the project. These are some of the partners we work with globally, not all of them, but just to give you an idea. So we have oil and gas, GEM, which is government, education, medical, Pure government, like police, utilities, hospitality, mobility, and retail. These are important, and all of these customers and partners have stayed with us throughout the years and expanded. McDonald's is actually very close right now to incorporating us into their standards globally for all franchises. 
we do integration. We have our own software, but sometimes you need some, maybe you need something more, maybe you need something different. So we have integration with different VMS and BMS systems, storage, networking. So we're an open protocol. And we have 12 years of awards globally. These are awards we've won across the planet. It's not just one show, it's not just in Germany. So this gives you an idea of what Mobotics is, where we're going, and how we can help. The idea is we do not produce your standard $50 buy online Alibaba camera. We have real intelligence, real analytics, and give you value for money with a bigger return on investment. And that's basically it. I think I caught up your time. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much.